Okay, folks, Phil the Bee Man here. I got something special for you today. This is my dad, who is the master candle maker in the family. And he, here we are in his workshop. This is about as artisanal as you can get. And he's going to just uh, do a pour of candles. And so he, have, he starts by taking the last batch of candles out of the molds. Trimming the wick on the top and on the bottom, and there's number one. Okay. And we use elastics. This is our uh, pliable mold. Close pin to center the wick on the bottom. And it's ready to go. And he uh, each well, he keeps a st Dad, hold that up again. See how you have a long string of wick? Rather than re-threading the mold every time, he just continues to pull that wick through on every candle that's poured. Let's do another one. You bet. Yeah, keep going. Looks like I can get one more out of that. Beautiful. I think we better put another one on the bottom. Pull the string, and she's ready to go again. Okay. Can you do one of the smaller ones with the cardboard around it? Uh, sure. These smaller molds we found were when you tighten that elastic enough, it kind of deformed the candle. So we took some cardboard tube mm -hmm. to. But when sometimes when it leaks, I put extra elastic around the bottom. Okay. Oh, this is an empty one. <laughs> okay, it was ready to go. Okay. Uh, the small one. Eh? Oh, or the, that one there. Okay, that's that's the fancy B one. Sometimes I check them against the light, make sure that they don't leak at the bottom. And this time you're using a, a different clip. Yeah, I think it should have a wider clip. There she's ready. And I put that in a little jar, a glass jar. And that helps hold it upright. That holds it up. Okay. Can you show us uh, how to get the, the uh, tapers out of the mold? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. These tapers have been here overnight. Um, 
quickly. First I take the Got these blocks here. Okay, that's clean. Mm -hmm. Now we pull the Slip knots out. Overhand knots in the bottom to keep the wick from pulling through. the same pliers, push that down and then out. A little bit of uh, wax is shrunk inside the taper mold as it is, as it is cooled. So you just got to break that uh, adhesion a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, show us a couple more steps here, Dad. Uh, these, you mean? Uh, or what would you do um, for the pouring, filtering and the pouring? Have you got enough wax ready there to uh, pour some? I think so. Uh, let me check. So while Dad was telling, while while all this candle, the molds emptying and resetting has been happening, he is cooking up his wax, batch of wax on the table there. And usually he goes in for coffee, but uh, we'll try and simulate this a little bit. What are you stirring? Stirring the wax. Just to help it melt? Or you're, yes. just, you're not yeah. adding anything, right? No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I just added a wee bit. Adding more yeah. wax. Yeah. 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 Okay. The wax melts fairly quickly with, with stirring. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll... You're going to pour it through the filter? Oh, not yet. Not yet. No. No. And okay. This oh, okay, okay, okay. So, I'm going to do one of these. Okay, I'm going to thread. Oh, you're going to thread it up, okay. Have to thread it up. Okay. So, getting the wick through the taper, that's the tricky part. I so, what do you. I still have some of the original. Okay. Okay, so, lesson one. To put the wire and the string, and I'm left-handed, so others will have to do it in reverse. <laughs> and tie this wire, frame wire, around and around, quite tight to each other. about maybe I don't know how many times 
six, seven, eight, and then clip off the wire. and the string as tightly as possible, as closely as possible and if a piece of wire still sticks out take an other pair of pliers and just kind of there now it has to go into the mold, go into the big hole first, and it comes out the other end, and it should come through. And I do this counterclockwise. Uh, I do this, I'm sorry, I do this clock, clockwise, which makes it easier for later on. Okay, so that's one. Three. Don't tell me this is a hard one. It always is harder when the video is running, Ted. <laughs> but I have one. Is it a tighter hole? Uh, I yeah, it's just not, not as smooth at the other end, and it resists going through. Darn it. This one here, the hole is... Well, there was wax there. So I also have a little nail here. See, there's wax, there's wax around here on the inside, I think. Now, I haven't got enough, so I know exactly now, because I did it top, I did it clockwise, now I know exactly which ones to pull in order to get this last one. and shiny inside and it's got a clear hole. Folks tell me dad that what they like about my videos is uh, they see the real the, the real deal not just when everything's working great. Right. Last one, if it doesn't, if it's too hard to come, I have to pull it with the pliers. There. Okay, now we're ready to start putting the
Okay. Put some blocks there. Uh, no, so you're gonna put a knot in them, right? I, yeah. I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong end. I'm not in a movie every every day. <laughs> there. Okay. Now we start here. Now I go counterclockwise. As to which wick you're working on at each time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I put some wooden things here. There we go. Now I reverse my hands and put my hand on the And you want spin, and I want that quite tight, so it doesn't leak on the bottom. Okay, next stage is to make sure that these are centered and because there's a bit of wax on these uh, close pins, they slide a wee bit and now it's ready to be poured. So, I'm going to Snip the ends off these. Okay. Put this on here. I kind of, uh, because these things sometimes tip a bit, I make sure that they're kind of level at the top. Sometimes by turning it, it helps a bit. I think I need a little piece of wood underneath there. There. I'm going to level that. And now we're ready for pouring. But first we have to strain. So this is cheesecloth. Put it over the can and I put a little sealer, a little just to get that cloth in there and then there and it's ready for pouring. And I pour the rest in, usually pour it out into a garbage for, for wax. And we'll take okay. that, the, the uh, dirty wax and everything will go back into the, into the salvage wax that'll be, end up in a wax rendering plant. Okay. I find that a plastic, uh, usually you wear gloves. You're saying the plastic tub? The plastic tubs really work well because I can I can aim it better, you know, with a almost yeah. becomes a, like a spout. Oh we've got a leak. Uh oh. 
You can see that the wax is coming out the bottom. That's really, that's really serious, serious, serious. Just try the other ones, Dad. Right? Just do the other ones. The other holes? Yeah. Where do you want to set the first one? Okay, here we go. Yeah, those two are full. And this one here. Was it this one that's leaking? Okay, I think they're all full now. Maybe that. The wax can be a little bit self-sealing because as it cools yeah, so on that metal, it's, it's okay it now. I fills think. the hole. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pour another one. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll pour this uh, nice big one here. Yeah. And another one here. And we can pour this. Only like only like those. That's just a little block of wax. There. Beautiful. That's a good hobby. Good hobby for an old guy. Not look, looking for things to do. Very good. And this wax that spilled there, that'll just go back in the pot next time around, right? Yes. So there's really not a lot of waste there. No, there's no waste. No. No. Okay. It's probably not something you want to do if you wanted to keep your workshop perfectly clean and organized all the time, but uh, we'll scrape all this wax up when you're done and just throw it back in the pot. Thanks a lot, Dad. Okay. You're welcome.